Um, thank you very much, dear moderators. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. So in this study, we looked at the effect of the FFDM vendor unit on both visual and automated volumetric assessment of uh, density. Um, I don't have to remind you about the clinical importance of mammographic density, not only obscuration of cancers, but also the increased risk of breast cancer for a uh, from density itself, and in the best meta-analysis, that was about four to six-fold, depending on the method that was used. So the time-honored method of assessing density is visually, where the reader looks at the mammogram and just makes a guesstimate as to the percent mammographic density. And the most commonly used method is the American College of Radiology BIRAD score, uh, though some centers will use a visual analog scale where a mark is drawn on a 100 millimeter line where the observer thinks percent breast density is. In the research arena, the most commonly used and well-validated tool is Cumulus, which is computerized semi-automated thresholding. But the trouble with Cumulus is it's very time-consuming and cumbersome, and there's no way that it could be used in the clinical arena. But with the widespread uptake of full-field digital mammography, now fully automated volumetric assessment is a realistic possibility. So these methods are not only fully automated, they are reliable and repeatable in comparison with visual assessment, and they do appear to be predictive of breast cancer risk. They utilize the raw data as opposed to the processed images that we all look at, and we are all familiar, I'm sure, with the very different appearances, say, of a hologic mammogram and a GE mammogram. So we wondered whether the vendor unit did actually affect volumetric measurement. And the purpose of our study was twofold. Firstly, to ascertain whether there were systematic differences in volumetric measurements between differing FFDM units in the same subject and secondly, to find out whether the image processing actually altered visual perception of density. So this was a retrospective analysis of fully anonymized data. IRB ethical approval was waived. We had 105 asymptomatic women, all of whom had FFDM taken on GE Cenograph DS and Hologic Selenium mammograms one year apart. Volumetric density was assessed with vol para version 1.4, and for this study, the metric that we used was percent volumetric density averaged across four views. Visual assessment was by two very experienced radiologists with proven, excellent inter- and intra-observer agreement, and density was categorized according to the BIRAD score or with a VAS scale. The reading protocol was quite complicated. We had random batches of 51 mammograms, and obviously mammograms of the same subject were not read in the same setting. All the batches were re-read after an interval of no less than two weeks, but additionally, we either read them with an admixture of GE and Selenia images, or fully GE or fully Selenia to see if there was any overt unblinding bias. When the Volpara percent density was plotted for the paired measurements for each woman, the data was not normally distributed, as you've already seen this morning, so it was normalized with a log transform, and then we used bland altman plots, intraclass correlation coefficient, and Cohen's kappa for the BIRAD scores. So to the results. For all the methods, agreement between the paired scores for each woman was excellent with intraclass correlation coefficient and Cohen's kappa greater than 0.9. For Volpara, the median score for all the readings was 8.4% and the mean absolute difference for the paired scores was 0.67% which equates to about 8% of the median score. What you have here is a scatter plot showing for each woman the difference between the GE and Selenium mammograms. So a positive integer means that the GE mammograms were read by Volpara as being slightly denser. And you can see that it doesn't look as if there's much of any systematic bias. And this was confirmed on the bland altman plot. So this is the normalized data, and the figures are a bit meaningless, but you can see that the average difference is only just above zero, and there's no evidence of any proportional error. 
Turning to the visual scorings, firstly, there was no evidence of unblinding bias. That is to say, the expert observers perceived the density the same whether they were a mixed batch or purely GE or hologic. But 10% of the BIRAD scores disagreed, and where they disagreed, the G mammograms were perceived as being more dense in nearly all the cases. The difference was usually only one score. The commonest was BIRADS 2 on GE and 1 on Selenia. And here is a scatter plot again, and I think you can appreciate now that there are many more positive readings on the VAS scores indicating that the G mammograms were perceived as a bit denser. And that is confirmed on the bland Altman plot, where there clearly is a systematic bias in favor of the GE mammograms. So here's just one example where the GE image was read as BIRADS category 2, and the Selenia image as 1, and here, BIRADS category 3 on the GE, and 2 on the Selenia. So, in conclusion... We appear to have excellent agreement and reliability for Volpara, regardless of the FFDM vendor unit used. But visual assessment of density does appear to be affected by the differing post-processing. And to my mind, this is just uh, yet another good argument to uh, suggest that we should be using fully automated volumetric assessment as opposed to visual assessment. Now, clearly, there are some weaknesses in the study. It's possible that all the women put on weight so their BMI went up in the year, so yes, the low rad images would appear less dense, but we had no evidence of that uh, when we looked at absolute fibroglandular volume and total breast volume. I think the work does need to be repeated for other vendors and also with other commercially available volumetric tools. And finally, of course, the question of the equivalence of tools such as Volpara and Quantra is a different topic altogether. Thank you very much.